Making complex looking animations like this can seem like a daunting task. However, it's actually a pretty simple process if you have the right tool, like React. So try not to overreact, or maybe do, because in this video you'll see how to quickly arrange layers into lines and grids, as well as make them react to each other to create high level looking animations using React for After Effects. We'll also talk about some of its limitations, so if you've been on the fence about buying this add-on, hopefully this review will help you decide. Hi everyone, I'm Andrew Marston, and today I'm gonna to be showing you some of the features of React for After Effects. Now, I personally use this tool all the time. It saves me hours of tedious layer duplicating, fiddling with repeaters, tweaking keyframes, and I think that once you know how it works, it can do the same for you. In this video, you'll learn what React does, how to instantly arrange layers into customizable lines and grids using React's repeater tools, how to use React's effectors to quickly create complex animations, what situations React might come in handy with a couple practical examples, and a few points to consider before buying. And I also want to point out that there is a trial version of React available on aescripts.com if you want to follow along. In short, React adds two main controls for otherwise time-consuming tasks in After Effects. The first are called repeaters. Now these act sort of like the repeater operation that you'll find in shape layers, except on steroids, and they can be used for any layer. The second are effectors. So based on their settings like size and shape, to name a few, effectors can influence the transform properties of other layers, causing them to react, hence the name of the plugin. All right, so here we are in After Effects, and to make a line or grid out of a single layer is super easy with React. You just select the layer and then click either the line, grid, honeycomb, or radial buttons. So I'll click the grid button, and we can see that now there are 16 of these shape layers, and they're arranged in a 4x4 four four grid. And the reason why it's 4x4 four four is simply because that is the default setting that I have in our React settings panel, four by four. If, let me just undo that. If I wanted something else, something custom, let's say something crazy like six by three, for example, and I click that grid button again, now we have a grid that is six wide and three tall. And we also have some more controls to customize this. We have this React repeater null and React effector null, which actually I'm gonna talk about the React effector in the next section, but let's focus on the repeater. If I have that null selected and I drag it around the screen, you can see that the grid follows, which is quite handy. And I'll undo that back to the center. And then on that null, we have some more customization options. We have the X and Y spacing, which is really how many pixels between the rows and the columns. So let's just say that we wanted the columns to be 300, 300 pixels apart. I'll put 300 here. We can see that now they have spaced themselves out accordingly. And we'll just put in another number for the row spacing, now 200. And you can see what's going on. Uh, what else do we have? Anchor point. Right now it's in the center, but you can align it to the first layer and we can still drag that around. And if we wanted to offset that from the first layer a little bit, we have this offset option. You can see that it is now shifting where that anchor point is relative to the grid. And then last, if we decide now that we've seen this grid that actually I kind of wish I had clicked the honeycomb button, then you can just click this checkbox under the honeycomb tab and enable that honeycomb stagger. Every other row is slightly staggered from the one above it. And we can control how much stagger that is. Here we've made it more subtle with 25%. If we wanted to make a line, it is a super simple process. We'll just put a number in like eight and click the line button. And we see it is basically an eight by one grid with similar controls, but no honeycomb option because there's only one row. And if we wanted this layer repeated around a circle, then we can click the radial button and it will distribute the number of copies we've set in this text box around a circle. And on the repeater null, we also have the option to change how big the radius of that circle is so we can make that smaller. And this is all keyframable, so you could completely animate this. And then similar to trim paths, we have a start and end property. So you could animate how these wrap around the circle as well. 
And everything that I've shown you up until this point doesn't have to just apply to a single layer. Let me go ahead and enable two more shapes. So if we select all three of these shape layers and click the grid button, now we see that React has distributed all of these shapes in order throughout our 4x4 grid. And I didn't mention it previously when I was talking about grids, but if you select any of the layers within the grid, you have more controls. So we could adjust the position of this rectangle, for example, down. Now it's a little bit offset from where it was originally placed. And if we wanted to swap its spot with like this triangle, we have this index value. So the triangle's index value is two because in array counting, arrays start at zero. So this layer is zero, one, two. So its index value is two and this rectangle is six. So if we put two for the rectangle and then select the triangle and input six, now we've customized where these items are appearing in the grid. So let me back up one more time and talk about another use case. So what if we don't know if these are our final graphics, but we still need to set up this grid? Well, React has you covered. In the settings, we can choose pre-compose instead of off. We'll say instance, save and close. And now if I select these layers and click the grid button, we see that in the timeline panel, instead of shape layers, we have all of these compositions. And if we go to our project panel, now there's a folder called React Precomps. And inside that we have a pentagon, a rectangle, and a triangle, which have our original shape layers. So we could easily swap these out if like the art director or producer or client decided that we needed to change these somehow. We still have them all set up in our main composition in our grid. So now that we have this grid set up, we don't necessarily want all of these expressions and controls forever slowing down our render. So if we select all of our layers and click this X button, then React will remove all of these expressions and controls, but leave everything in the place where we had customized it. Lastly, in this lines and grid section, I wanna highlight how React can create grids from live text layers. Yes, it can do that too. So if we select this text layer and click the grid button, we can see that React now has created a four x four grid from the letters of our source text. And if we look, we can see we have all the same controls as before, plus we have this new text guide layer. And if we double click that to edit the text to uh, something else, for example, we can see that the grid, the letters in the grid update in real time. And we also have the ability to change what this is based on. So right now it's based on letters, but you could do words, you could do lines, you can do pretty much whatever you want in terms of grids with React. All right, so now let's take a look at how we can use React's effectors to quickly make some complex animations. I have this shape layer with a triangle in it. We'll make that into a four by four grid. And this time we're gonna select the effector null. And as we drag that around the composition, it sort of looks like nothing's happening. And that's because currently nothing is happening. But as soon as we change the shape setting in the controls effect that is part of our rig now to something else like circle, we get an idea of what's gonna be going on. The other options here are box and also linear if you just want to completely draw a line across the composition, but let's stick with circle. And I'm gonna collapse some of these rig effects that are part of the React rig. We have controls, which are just the general controls for the, for the rig. Then we have position, scale, rotation, and opacity. And these are the properties that we can affect with our effector. And let me show you what I mean using scale. So I'm gonna click the FX button and toggle open these uh, controls here. And if I change the X or uniform scale value from zero to 50, now we have something going on. And you can see that everything that's underneath the white part of our circle is having 50 added to its scale and that effect is fading to the cyan circle. So basically everything that's underneath our effector is being scaled up by 50. This is the principle that will apply to all the other properties, the position, scale, rotation, and opacity. But there are a few unique features of a few of these that I wanna highlight. So in position, I'm gonna enable that effect. And the first option here is mode. We have either absolute or relative or attract repel. So absolute relative does exactly what you'd think it would do. Um, as an example, we'll add 100 to the X. And now as we move our effector around, whatever layers are underneath it 
are moving 100 pixels to the right. They're having 100 added to their X position. If we switch from absolute relative to attract repel, now that 100 no longer applies because we're not in the absolute relative mode. If we go into the attract repel mode, we have our attract repel property. And I'm gonna go ahead and add 100 to that. And we can see that now these are being repelled they're running away from our effector. And to create this animation by hand would just take forever. And using React, we're doing it really quickly. And the inverse of that is the attract. Now these are being attracted sort of like a magnet to our effector. Great, so that's position and we've been over scale. Rotation has a few unique features. So relative is what you would think. And by the way, I don't think I've mentioned this, but React works with 3D layers as well. Right now we're just in 2D, so we'll just use the Z property. We'll set that to 90. But if you had 3D layers, then you could influence all three of those 3D rotation properties. So as you'd expect, when the effector passes over a layer, that layer rotates 90 degrees. And instead of relative, let's look at look at mode. <laughs> Probably not that funny. It's just funny to me as I'm making this. And as soon as we enable that, we can see that these triangles are looking at the effector. So there's also these other options that are part of each of these property controls. We have random, step, and sticky. So I'm going to move back to relative. And in random, I'm gonna put 15. So now the layers that are being affected by our effector, they are rotating 90 degrees plus or minus 15, which adds just a little bit of variation. And I'm gonna highlight sticky also. So sticky is essentially the increment value that these will rotate. They will sort of click into position 45 degrees at a time, instead of smoothly rotating as the effector passes over them up to 90 degrees. Now they will wait until they're at 45, and then they will click into 45, and then they will move to 90. And last, we have opacity, very simple. Uh, if we say minus 100, now 100 is being subtracted from the opacity property of the layers under the effector. And if you combine and customize a few of these controls, you can quickly get an animation that would take quite a bit of effort to create by hand in a relatively short amount of time. So here we have a linear effector, and as it passes over a layer, that layer scales up, turns to look to the right while also moving to the right. All right, so to answer the question, when does React come in handy? Basically, any time that you would need to duplicate and arrange layers in a line, grid, or around a circle, and or have their transform properties animate based on another element in the composition, that's when React is really gonna save you time. So here's a couple practical examples that I came up with. So in almost every explainer video at some point, there's usually some sort of array of icons that represent their services or something that they do. So I came up with this example where we have these icons that animate around a circle and then we highlight one by one and it displays some text in the center. And the way I set this up was actually with two effectors, we have this, this first one that scales them up and makes them go from no transparency to full opacity. And at the same time on the repeater, I made the circle that they're arranged around get larger, and I animated the end property of that repeater, kind of like a trim path, so they wrap around the circle. And then I used a second effector to highlight the icons and their backgrounds. So it, when this second effector passes over the icon, the background scales and fades, the icon scales up, and also I tied the scale and opacity of the text to the scale and opacity of the appropriate background. So as the effector moves from one to the next, then they highlight with the text appearing in the center. Next, as I was learning React, probably the first thing that I thought of was its application for prototyping UI UX animation, like website menus, or you could even do like a Candy Crush sort of game. And in this case, I made really quickly a macOS dock with icons. And as the effector passes 
through them, then they move up in the composition and scale up a little bit. And then I just created a circle and tied its position to the effector's position. And my last example here, there's plenty of things you can do with this, was just to create a simple background of hexagons with a large box effector. So as the box passes over these shape layers, then they scale down and as it passes away, then they scale back up and then it loops. This is a real easy way to make an interesting background quickly. So before you go out and buy React, here's a few points that you might want to consider. Although it's possible to customize the easing using the controls that come with React, of course, you would have much more precise control if you animated everything individually, although this would take a lot more time. Next, it's possible to offset the position of the line and grid items using the script added layer controls, but it is a little bit tedious because you have to do it one by one. Moving on, just so that you know what you're getting, I think it's worth mentioning one more time that the effectors only impact the position, scale, rotation, and opacity properties. To impact other properties like, for example, the amount of blur in a fast box blur effect, you'd have to create a new rig and tie it into React's controls yourself using something like a linear expression. Next, I've found that using complex effectors on grids that have a lot of items can be somewhat resource intensive for your computer. A few workarounds though are to turn on adaptive resolution, solo only the essential layers that you're gonna be working with, and also to pre-render when possible. And lastly, in order to use React with text layers, you have to have at least After Effects version 16 or above because this feature uses the JavaScript expressions engine. All right, hopefully now you know enough about React to decide if it's right for you. And if you found this video helpful, please consider subscribing and clicking the notification bell for this YouTube channel, as well as the like button on this video. And otherwise, thanks so much for watching. I'm Andrew Marston and have a good day.